VPC is nothing but a private network that you can create on your AWS cloud. So we have VPC to be discussed. We'll be discussing what is subnet. We'll be discussing what is internet gateway, root table and NAT gateway. So for this explanation, I'll be taking you directly to the whiteboard and we would be discussing further over there. It would be better for you to understand it over there. So VPC is what we are discussing, virtual private cloud. Now, yesterday, into our previous video, we have discussed about the regions, right? About the global infrastructure of AWS. So we will be understanding that how that global infrastructure would be helpful for us over here. So we have discussed about regions. We have discussed about availability zones, right? So let us further discuss it over here under VPC as well, that how those things would be helping us here, right? So just give me one moment and I would be creating this diagram. So we have a region, okay? That region can be anything. Let's take it as US East 1, that is North Virginia region, VPC. When I say VPC, it means that it is my virtual private network in AWS where I can launch my resources and those resources can get the IP addresses from the range that I have decided. So that's why we discussed about IP addressing before to this. So I will create a VPC over here. Okay. And that VPC, suppose, is having the IP address as 172.31.0.0 slash 16. So this VPC or this network, which is my private network in cloud, can have 65,536 IP addresses in total. So VPC is a component which would be created inside of a region. So it is a region-specific service, right? The next thing is VPC can span across availability zones. So this is our AZ1, this is our AZ2. So this would be US East 1A. And this can be suppose US East 1B. VPC can span across multiple availability zones and we can create five VPCs per region. Five VPC per region. This is the default quota that is given to us by AWS. Now inside of the availability zone, what we can do? Understand this. If we have one large area, okay, and that area is being, you know, purchased by some builder. So what that builder is going to do? is going to divide that large area into multiple buildings. So each building can have its own security, its own resident, right? So the same thing happens over here because this is very large network. The VPC is very large. It can have 65,536 addresses. Maybe for few of the addresses, I want more security than that of others. With a few instances and what we can do inside of the VPC, we can launch the instances, right? So those instances, maybe some of the instances, I want them to communicate with internet. Other instances, I do not want them to communicate with internet. So sometimes I want my instances to be public. Sometimes I want them to be private. So for that, what we can do, we can take the part of this CIDR range or CIDR block <coughs> And we can assign it to something called a subnet. So over here, inside of a VPC, what we can do is we can create different subnets. In, and subnets would be residing in some availability zone. Right. So suppose I'm having two subnets inside of AZ1 and one subnet inside of AZ2. So over here, if we see, then the idea of this is to divide our network. So let's say that I am dividing my network. This is my subnet one. Okay. I will be dividing this network. How to divide this network? To increase the number of 
subnet mask. So the subnet mask, if I increase over here, right, instead of 16, if I put it 20 or 21, 22, then what will happen here? The number of network bit would increase. So automatically the number of host bit would decrease and my network will become smaller. Now it would be having less number of uh, host positive. So what I can do here is I can reduce this. What I'll do for that, I will give here one subnet range. Okay, I have to give the CIDR range again for this subnet. So that would be 172.31. Dot zero dot zero slash twenty. I'll create another subnet over here. This is our subnet number two, and I will give the range as one seventy two dot thirty one dot sixteen dot zero slash twenty. Then I'll have subnet number three over here. I'll do one seventy two dot thirty one dot thirty two dot zero slash twenty. So if you don't know how to divide the CIDR into the subnets, you can use the online calculators which are easily available on Google. Okay, so this is about the subnet guys. Now, <clears throat> I can have two types of subnet over here. When we talk about subnets, okay, subnets can be of two types. Subnet can either be public or it can be right. So for understanding this public and private subnets, we have to discuss two more concepts. The first concept is of internet gateway and the other concept is of root tables. So let us discuss this first and we'll be coming back to public and private subnets. So basically public subnets are the subnet which can accept the traffic, the inbound and the outbound, both traffic from the internet. Okay. So all the instances inside of this particular subnet can communicate to internet, to the public internet. And the private subnets do not support the internet traffic. Okay. And how this will be achieved? This will be achieved using root tables. So first of all, let us discuss about Internet Gateway. What is Internet Gateway? It is a component of networking which allows us to traverse our traffic from a network to the public internet. So if we see over here, when we go to our VPC or we go to our AWS console, we can create the internet gateway and attach it to VPC. I'll be showing you the demonstration as well. Don't worry. So I have one internet gateway over here, right? It would be sitting at the edge of VPC. And suppose I have some virtual machine in this subnet too. And we will consider that the subnet is a public subnet. So if this instance is trying to generate the traffic for internet, then it will go through the internet gateway to the public internet. So what does the use of internet gateway or the purpose of internet gateway? First thing, whenever we launch the instances inside of our subnet, instances are nothing but the EC2 instances. We'll be discussing about these very soon. These are nothing but the virtual machines that we create on AWS on which you can host your applications. So these EC2 instances, whenever we launch instances inside of our VPC, they would be getting the private IP address by default. Okay. And we can opt in for their public IP address. If you think that we want this server or we want this EC2 instance, as our public instance, then we have to enable the public IP address for that. So we'll be assigning the public IP address because it is residing in public subnet. So this internet gateway, whenever the traffic would be generated from this EC2 instance, it would be having the private IP address that from this particular private instance or the private IP address would be used for that. That this instance is generating packets with IP, with private IP, this, this, this. 
Okay. So, the internet gateway would be converting the private IP address to the public IP address before moving that traffic out in the internet. So, to protect the private IP address and the security of our instance. Other thing that internet gateway will do is, it will provide us the target in root tables. So this brings us to our another question that what is root table? So root table as you might all have heard that it is used for routing our traffic on internet. Right or anywhere in the network basically not just internet. So root tables uh, AWS is having the implicit router. So we don't have the access to that router, but we do have the access to these root tables. So we can create the root tables and we can define that uh, where we want to route our traffic. So suppose we have created two root tables. Okay. The first root table, let's say that I will just put on one square over here. This is my public root table. Okay. And this is my suppose private root table. I'm creating these root table for this particular VPC, the one which we have already created over here. Right. I'll zoom out a little bit for a good view. So where you can see that the CIDR block for VPC is We want internal instances or internal machines to communicate with each other. Whoever or whichever instances are there inside of this private network, they should be communicating with each other, right? So for that, into the root table, we have something called as destination. And we have the entry for target. So what will happen into destination and target is... If the destination of the traffic is internal to our network, okay, it means that it is meant to traverse into this particular network 0.0 slash 16. If the traffic being generated is having the destination anywhere inside of this network, then the target would be local that locally traverse the traffic. But if it wants to go out because it is public root table, so we can also have a traffic which wants to go to internet. So this is the CIDR block which represents internet 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0, 0 anywhere. If our traffic is destined for anywhere out in the public network or to the internet, then the target would be internet gateway that is IGW. And there would be some ID after this which would be a number. If we create the private route table, we do not put this entry because we do not want our private subnets to be communicating to the outer world or, you know, the public. So that's why the only entry we can have is 0, .0 slash C local. And if any other entry for a specific IP address is there, you can put it over here. Okay. So two purposes of internet gateway one is to convert do the network address translation from private ip address to the public and vice versa and to provide us with the target and root tables now once we create these root tables we can associate these root tables with the subnets so let's suppose that subnet 1 and subnet 2 both of these subnets are the public subnets and the subnet 3 is a private subnet so what I can do is I can simply associate this particular private subnet with my private root table and I can associate this public subnet as well as this public subnet both okay subnet 1 and subnet 2 I can associate it with public root table. So I hope that now the public subnet and the private subnet would be clear for you. 
internet gateway also two purposes reiterating again to do the network address translation and to provide target and route table and route tables are nothing but these are the tables which decides that how to route traffic which is generated from our sub okay so these were the components that we have to discuss another component that we want to discuss over here is nat gateway 